So there are a number of different accreditations that you could get with EXA. I'll take you through a couple of them. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've subscribed, thank you so much and thumbs up to you. If you haven't, press that red button below. Also remember to press that bell button for you to get notifications every time I post some new content. So basically, I share content around engineering, career development, and leadership. I'm a true believer in that a lot of us go through different experiences. But if we don't share that and impart it on others, then what is the point? I've gotten some requests to share around X and the PR edge. And one of the questions that has come through, what are the differences between the different categories of the professional accreditation with EXA? Those of you that don't know, EXA is the Engineering Council of South Africa, and they're a statutory body established under the Engineering Professions Act, 46 of 2000. And basically what EXA does is that they regulate the profession. So whether it's accreditations, whether it's certifications, um, and even in the workplace and as professionals, they also govern professionals in the workplace post their accreditation as well. Um, what's interesting also is X is the only body that is authorized to give the accreditations and award engineers the title of professionalism. So there are a number of benefits of registering as a professional engineer with EXA. So number one, there is peer recognition um, and you're recognized in the body of professionals of engineers. And not only do you get peer recognition, but the accreditation is also internationally recognized. So you also gain public confidence and also in organizations and industry. What you also get is that title of professional engineer. The same way doctors get doctor with their names, you also get the title of professional engineer. Last but not least, there is a benefit in compensation depending on which industry you're working in. So I'll speak about the four different categories that there are with the professional accreditation. The first is professional engineer. To qualify as a professional engineer or a candidate engineer, you must have a degree with one of the universities in South Africa, also an accredited degree internationally recognized by the Washington Accord. So whether it's your BSc in engineering or your B inch, you must have a degree to qualify under the category of PR inch or candidate engineer. The second category is professional engineering technologist. So this is a person who's acquired a B tech. You can also qualify to become a candidate engineering technologist. So this individual would need to have a BTEC. So for PR Inch, you must have a BSc or Inch, and a professional engineering technologist must have a BTEC. The third category is professional engineering technician. This is an individual who's got a national diploma. So you also qualify to become a candidate engineering technician, but you must have a national diploma. And the last category is a professional certificated engineer. And this is an individual who's got their GCC. Check out some of my previous videos where I share around the GCC. GCC is for mechanical and electrical engineers. But basically, you can get it whether you've got a degree, um, your BTEC, or you've got your N6. Check out my previous posts, even a playlist below on how you can get your GCC. So those are the four categories. So you've got your PR Inch, your PR Inch Technologist, your PR inch technician, and also your professional certificated engineer. With all the different categories, you can apply as a candidate. In order to apply as a candidate, you must have the minimum qualification. And basically, they're saying and encouraging that immediately as you get out of school and you've got your qualification, you register immediately with EXA. What they do share is also the guidelines under the different categories of what your training program should be in the three years before you acquire your professionalism. There are different requirements for the four different categories. The first three are somewhat similar in that you put together a series of reports on your work experience. So example, for a professional engineer, you must cover basics, design, a design review or problem solving, and also have been exposed to management or leadership within your three years before you apply as a professional engineer. As a candidate engineer, you're basically under the records of EXA, they ensure that you've got a mentor, and they give you a guideline as to what you need to follow and cover before you apply as a professional within the three years. Similarly, with the other categories, as a candidate, you will also get a guideline on the work experience that you must document and have, also the projects of problem solving that you've been exposed to and that you've completed successfully, and also submit your report to EXA. As a professional certificated engineer, you must be legally appointed for a minimum of one year after you get your GCC and also put together the work experience and also as a responsible person on site, what you've been exposed to and the decisions that you've made for them to warrant you professionalism. Remember, one of the requirements with EXA is that they'll call you in for an interview. So don't be surprised after you submit your application that they call you in for a one-on-one -on -one or face-to-face -face interview. So the entire application process can take about three to six months, depending on whether you've got all your documentation and all order, so do expect it to take anything between three to six months. Stay tuned for a series that I'll share on EXA 
and the different reports that you'd need to put together for you to get your accreditation. Remember to live your best life, learn as you grow, and lead for change. Shop.